Hey there, great to see you. Welcome back. We continue our journey into the nature of reality with a very important subject, something we've only touched upon briefly before, but one concept which is deeply significant to the evolution and transformation of our species. This is, of course, healing. To understand the nature of healing, we have to conceptualize two things, love and wholeness. The word heal etymologically derives from the word whole, which is the same root for the word holy and even hallow. So for instance, when you hear the Lord's Prayer and it says, hallowed be thy name, what that actually translates to is, whole is your name. And since the name of the Supreme Spirit is, in actuality, a cosmic vibration emanating through all reality, hallowed be thy name literally means your cosmic vibration is whole and total. The bridge here from wholeness to love is also profound as love is the vibration of creation which weaves itself into the fabric of reality from the source of all things. And so at long last, in today's episode, we're going to explore this profound connection between love and healing and make sense of how deep and transformative healing can take place in every level of one's life. Here we go. Hey, really quick, on February 5th, we are going to be going live in Spirit Mysteries, hosting a special event, a brand new edition of the 12D Shield. This is a live group meditation for the purpose of activating our light bodies, protecting and cleaning our energetic fields, and creating a strong inner stability of mind, body, and spirit. If you'd like to attend, please use the link in the description to sign up now. If you're watching this after the event date, the recording is also available for you to enjoy, and I hope to see you there. Love is the source of all creation. It is the consciousness that actually forms the created universes, dimensions, and worlds that we live within. As we've discussed previously, looking into reality with a dualistic mind yields a perspective of threeness. Time is observed as past, present, and future. Space is seen as having the X, Y, and Z axes. And size is observed as the microcosm, the everyday world, and the macrocosm. This is the ever-present trinity of reality. But everything in this trinity, from atomic particles to the greatest of galaxies, are held together by forces that we have given particular names, which are sometimes seen as separate as well. Subatomic particles are held together by the strong force, molecules by electromagnetism. Planets are held in orbit by gravity. But what if these forces are not actually so different? What if it was all the same force manifesting in various ways through different dimensions? This is actually described through something called the cycle of synthesis, which is a very elaborate diagram that demonstrates the process of creation from the Supreme Spirit into material reality and back again. It's very similar to the Kabbalistic tree of life in a sense, but also very different, much more scientifically minded and less esoteric for the modern human mind. However, the cycle of synthesis is a very big conversation all on its own. And so we're gonna have to save it for a whole episode later, but I promise it'll weave itself very nicely into this conversation. Now, as mentioned, the primary vibration, if it could be described, that is imminent through all of creation is love. Love is a particular vibration of consciousness that holds things together and binds them in the most beautiful of ways. Without love, marriage is just a shell that will usually break apart. Sometimes a marriage will stay together for the sake of the children. But in that case, is it not still love that holds the marriage together? Love for the children? Love is a bond stronger than any other. People will die for love. In the Flower of Life books, Drumbelow explains how this works. Everything in the universe is a mirror of consciousness because consciousness is the first emanation from the Supreme Spirit. Matter itself is just consciousness crystallized. And consciousness is the light that reflects off the matter of the outer world and creates the material reality. What's more, the inner world of consciousness, such as our dreams, visions, feelings, emotions, sexual energy, kundalini, and even interpretation of the outer reality are the source of matter and how this matter is arranged. Love is the binding agent within the equation Love is the exact vibration that matter responds to. Love is the force that can change water into wine or bring a person back from the dead. 
and love is the force that causes one to heal themselves and others. For this reason, it is love and love alone that will heal the world. To speak of healing without speaking of love is not speaking with the truth. In medicine, only certain things are possible, but with love, all things are possible. With love, the incurable disease is nothing but light and the atoms of the body can be reformed into perfect health. The absence of love is the source of all disease, for it is love that binds matter into order out of chaos. And without love, chaos will always ensue. Disease then can be understood as matter in the body disorganized through chaos. Healing takes place only when love is present. Healing people, healing a city, or healing an entire planet is all the same. The only difference is simply the greater degree of love. The mind has the knowledge to manipulate matter, but love has the power to not only manipulate matter, but to effortlessly create matter from nothing. This is because when one is connected with love at the highest levels, they're connected to the source of all creation. No matter what the problem is that needs to be healed, love can always find a way. True love has no limits, and therefore our limits are only found in our belief patterns. If a doctor tells us that a certain disease is incurable and we believe them, we cannot heal ourselves because we become frozen in that belief. And then we must live out that belief even if it means living in great pain and discomfort for the rest of our lives. Only a miracle, something much greater than ourselves, can overcome a frozen belief, just as it is that the mind can stop healing from taking place. When our minds are in control and not our hearts, we will almost always suffer. To help conceptualize this, we might look at a few stories of amazing healings that have taken place. In Drumvalo's account, he shares that one time his wife walked into the kitchen and found a cast iron pan on the stove, which had been left on for too long by accident. She went and picked it up and only a moment later, her body responded with extreme pain. The pan had been searing hot. Now, these two had been practicing a lot of meditation and other spiritual techniques. And so he immediately ran in and said he would put her into a hypnotic trance and she agreed. So he put her under and the first thing he did was tell her that the pain would stop and it immediately did she became relaxed. Then he told her that the hand was going to return to normal on the count of three. And the moment he said three, he watched as her hand completely changed back to normal. It was at that moment that he said he knew that everything society and his parents had told him about reality was not true. The body was light and it responded to consciousness. It responded to whatever the person truly believed. Drumvalo also shared some other amazing healing stories too. I particularly like the one about the young boy who collected salamanders as a hobby and was fascinated by the fact that he could pull off the creature's tail or legs and it would just grow another back. But his parents never told him that that applied only to salamanders, but not people. So when he was 10 years old, when the boy lost his leg above the knee, what did he do? He actually grew another one back. Crazy, right? But there's one other story that I really want to share, which comes from Yogananda. And the story goes like this. A certain man was dying of diabetes. The doctors gave him three months to live and he decided, well, if all I have left to me is three months, let me spend it in seeking God. Gradually, he disciplined himself to sit in meditation each day longer and longer. And all the while he kept praying, spirit, please come into this broken temple. Three months passed and he was still alive. Then a year passed and he gradually increased his daily meditation to 18 hours a day. Then after two more years, suddenly one moment in meditation, a great light filled his being. He was caught up in a state of divine ecstasy. And on returning from that state, he found his body had been healed. Oh Lord, he prayed. I didn't ask for a healing. All I asked was that you come to me. And the voice of the divine echoed within him. Where my light is, there no darkness can dwell. Now, we're almost done for today's episode, but before we close, there are a few important things that we must discuss. First, we must make a distinction between healing ourselves and healing others. All of the great spiritual teachers, including the ones we've discussed here today, say that we must begin with healing ourselves first, because if one cannot heal themselves, how can they expect to heal another? Further, 
Even if one was a divine healer, they generally do not just go around touching people and bringing about miraculous healings because each person has their own karma and their own story and beliefs that must be healed. It's not just about the physical abnormality, but the many dimensions of one's body of consciousness being brought into wholeness. In order to facilitate healing for another, one must have permission from the higher self in order to proceed. This is even evident with Yeshua in the gospels. There were times when he denied people miracles, just like when he returned home to Nazareth and they promptly tried to throw him off a cliff. So as you can likely tell, the scope of healing both oneself and others is a massive subject. We're only scratching the tip of the iceberg here. And the intention with this episode is to get the ball rolling for those who are called to go deeper and learn more. For those who are particularly interested, I have a few recommendations for reading. One is of course, Drumvalo's Flower of Life books, as much of the material we've explored today comes from chapter 15 in volume two. I also recommend the books, The Essence of Self-Realization and Man's Eternal Quest by Paramahansa Yogananda, each of which cover an exceptionally wide range of subjects that are relevant to the subject of both healing and the evolution of consciousness. Oh, and before I forget, a personal request, please hit the notification bell if you haven't yet. Then you'll be updated the moment that our next video goes live, as it seems many people are not actually getting notified about the new videos. And with that, thank you again so much for watching and much love. We'll see you in the next video.